One of my favorite music videos was done by one of my favorite musical artists, the late Johnny Cash. He did a video called Hurt off of a song that was done, uh, authored by a musician named Trent Reasoner. And it's called by some the, the best music video that's ever been done. There's a scene in there where Johnny Cash is talking about uh, his empire of dirt, and he's kind of moving away all of his accolades and trophies and prizes through his lifetime of, of uh, stardom and music, and he's basically calling it, from the words of that song, an empire of dirt, you can have it all. Quite a thought, quite a, a summation in, in, in some ways. I've been thinking about the, the life of Solomon, looking at it through the lens of uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. And I thought about that song and that music video and an empire of dirt when I read the words of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 10, where Solomon writes, Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart rejoiced in my labor, and this was my reward from all my labor. I looked on all the works of my hands had done and on the labor in which I had toiled. And indeed, he writes, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. All vanity, grasping for the wind. That was Solomon's way of saying, my empire of dirt, you can have it all. But Solomon wrote that many thousands of years ago at a different time, but the lessons are still there. And the futility of life, the vanity of life, as he calls it, is still there. When you look at the life of Solomon, uh, I've talked in a few dailies here about his ascension to the throne, the time that he reigned. And when you look then at the, in a sense, the third act of his life that the Bible records, uh, the, the ending of his life, the Bible tells us that he didn't end too well. He let his many, many foreign wives bring in their gods and false religions, and he turned to a lot of them and brought that into the country. In 1 Kings chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, there's several verses that describe exactly how far Solomon turned from the obedience to God that he pledged at the beginning of his reign and what he, he did. He brought in false goddess, uh, gods and goddesses. It says in verse 6, he did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. He was overcome by power, by money, by, by the fame. And uh, uh, he comes under some very strong denunciation here by God. It says in verse 9, The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. And he turned from those statutes and the laws and the commandments of God and introduced a completely different lifestyle and religion Within, within Israel. And the story kind of ends there. Uh, God kind of preserves him for the sake of his former pledge to David, his father. But the story kind of ends right there on a downer note. And sometimes people wonder, what is Solomon's eternal fate? The Bible doesn't really tell us that directly, but I think we could, uh, when you understand the, the plan of God, the purpose of God, the purpose for Israel as a nation, and how Solomon played into that, um, I think that there's reason to expect that, that uh, God is not yet finished with Solomon, uh, that in his, per, in his overall plan of salvation for uh, mankind, that uh, Solomon uh, may yet rise and have an opportunity to repent and truly learn the full wisdom of God through Jesus Christ and His sacrifice and what that means for the, for the plan of God. As I've kind of looked at the life of Solomon through the lens of the book he wrote, Ecclesiastes, as I've said, it, it, it's a long and winding road. And I think at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, there's a little ray of understanding that maybe we should at least end on to be the final saying about Solomon's life. It's at the end of chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes. He says, the whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep the commandments. Was that his final testament, his final words, conclusion, after all that he surveyed about his own life and his ups and downs and how far he had strayed from God? Was there a last minute realization that brought him to, to understand and leave us those words to fear God and to keep the commandments? 
Well, I think that that record speaks for itself, and it certainly speaks to us to pick ourselves up when along that long and winding road, we might stumble, we might fall, we might veer off in a different direction. God's mercy, God's grace is very, very generous. We can repent, we can come back, we can dust ourselves off, and we can keep moving forward uh, in a straight line in the journey toward righteousness and toward God's coming kingdom. After all, the words are still the most important for us to remember out of the book of Ecclesiastes, and maybe that's what Solomon himself learned, that the whole duty for our life is to fear God and keep the commandments. Some important lessons to learn and to think about as we look at the life of Solomon through the lens of the book of Ecclesiastes and draw those lessons down into our life today. That's BT Daily. Join us next time.